Hello everybody and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. Today we're going to talk about erosion. When we last left off, we were talking about weathering or the breakdown of material into sediments. Well, once it breaks down, what happens to it? And as you can see by this picture here, there is a lot that can happen. Uh, this is a small town right here where we could see there was major destruction from the movement of material. So we could saw this material is coming down this way, moving this way, and it even looks like there might have been some material moving from somewhere else. This movement or transports of sediment from one location to another is called erosion. And that's it. It doesn't matter how the sediment moves or where it's coming from or going to, the process of moving that material is known as erosion. Uh, very close to home here, going to Montauk, out on the east end of Long Island. Uh, this is what it looked like back in 1838. So we can see the lighthouse right here and all this beachfront right here. This is the ocean or at the end of the point. That's actually right around here in this lower picture. And you can see from 1838 to 1990, there has been a massive amount of erosion. All this material here, right here, has been swept away into the ocean. And you can see here, this is what it looks like in 1990, and now it's actually getting even a little bit closer. And you can see here in this more recent picture down on the bottom that there isn't much left. There is eventually going to be a problem with the material that underneath the Montauk Lighthouse. This is Split Rock Lighthouse, right? You can see here, and all this material right here down at the bottom had to come from somewhere. And Notice how it's very close. They didn't originally build it so close to the edge, but it's been over time that this has been subject to much physical and chemical weathering that's been breaking down and eventually posing a, an issue for this lighthouse. This is a couple of different landscapes. You can see here, these buildings are here and all this sediment down here that most likely was a part of this wall. Or even here, you can see these houses sliding into the ground or into the water, just like we see right there falling rock. We've occasionally seen these signs as we travel on the thruway getting off of Long Island through Manhattan and heading upstate. We see these. Um, once again, that's the transport of material from higher ground to lower ground or erosion. Erosion is driven by the force of gravity. It's what pulls things, moves things, and drives, and drives sediment. Avalanches, same thing. We've heard a lot of news about avalanches uh, recently. Uh, one woman was caught in an avalanche, an older woman, they had a town help dig her out. Uh, a couple of people, recently skiers, and I believe jet skiers, um, snowmobilers, actually died in an avalanche. Let's take a look at it again. You can actually see what it looks like to be a, a tire right here from a car. And this looks like possibly might be a car too or some other uh, vehicle that's used on the mountain. Landslides. Uh, very familiar. This is actually a uh, town or a village in Col uh, Colombia, South America. And we can see here all this material that originated up here moved down to swallow up a few of these houses down here. This is known as mass movement. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Here's another landslide. We can see once again in this picture all this part of the roadway has now moved downwards, down slope. Same with all this material has moved down slope. All driven by gravity. Same same scenario right here. Once again, all this material. People just don't build their houses right on the edge of land. We know that eventually it's going to break down and erode. But what's happened here is, given some time, it breaks down. There are major agents of erosion. Water is probably the strongest agent of erosion on our planet. So streams, rivers, oceans, biggest agents of erosion. Ice or moving glaciers, another very important one. Actually, this helped to shape Long Island to present. So this is definitely one that is uh, for us here on Long Island. The wind uh, definitely moves quite a bit and we'll see this in drier climates. It's gonna have a, a pretty big effect on the landscape. Gravity, like I said, this one right here, really is the the driving force behind almost all of these. Or Earth's processes, earthquakes, plate tectonics, volcanoes. These are all different agents of erosion. We can compare a couple of different places, such as the Earth to possibly the moon. We could see the surface of the moon right here has all 
of these marks, these circular marks, these are impact craters. And you can see they're all over the place, everywhere. These are something a little bit different. Those are mare, or basically where uh, material has come up from on the subsurface of the moon. But all these little pock marks right here, they look like giant potholes, all right? have been unchanged. These have been around for millions of years, sometimes even a little bit longer. But we know the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. So with no atmosphere, we have no winds and no hydrosphere, no water. So if we don't have wind or water, we have no erosion. So no erosion on the moon because there is no wind or water or no atmosphere or hydrosphere. Unlike our planet Earth right here, hopefully most of you recognize this picture. And you can see here, we're covered with a huge amount of water. And all of this, these are all these systems that we were just talking about in our climate, in our meteorology unit. Huge atmosphere, lots of water equals erosion and actually quite a bit of erosion. We have very few pieces of evidence of impact craters on Earth. Some in Arizona, some South America, they do exist. They're around some in the Ukraine, Russia region, but we just don't see them as much. And also the green, there's plants and, and living, the biosphere is growing over some of these and moving and changing our landscape. So we have a huge amount of erosion on the planet Earth. Each of the agents of erosion produces its own characteristic shape or texture within rocks or in sediment. Uh, we're going to go over back more over these as we get into each ones, but there are some definite things that I would like to go over before we move on. Running water. You can see here, nice smooth surface. It's going to smooth and round out sediment. Glacial ice. What we're going to see are these parallel uh, grooves or striations. It may also polish rock too. So we'll see striations or polishing of rock. Gravity, jagged or angular edges as pieces break. And wind, what we're gonna see is one side is gonna be different than the other side due to the way the wind carries sediment and basically beats up on or starts weathering one side of the rock. That's about it for the screencast. Before we go on, we're gonna, um, before we end this, we'll be talking about um, other agents of erosion. So I hope you stay tuned for those. Take care, have a good day.